Welcome back to Triathlon Training Explained, powered by Training Peaks. This week, I am literally explaining training as I tackle some of the more common triathlon training mistakes that I'm afraid we see all that little bit too often. Now, we are all guilty of these at some point, even the pros of occasionally making some fundamental training mistakes. And I do get it, some of us have come into the sport having had maybe some level of experience in one discipline, but the other two, not so much, and they become a little bit of trial and error. So it's understandable that we make mistakes there. Now, I've witnessed countless mistakes over the years. I've actually made a few myself. So I've compiled a list of some of the more common mistakes and how to avoid them. Oh, hello, Fraser. No, no, I probably won't join you for a swim today. No, I was thinking of biking. I was probably gonna bike on Monday, bike on Tuesday, bike on Wednesday. Probably bike on Thursday as well, actually. Yeah, might as well on Friday, yeah. Yeah, maybe, yeah, Saturday and Sunday as well, yeah. Just bike all week. Now, I bet we all know that someone that just loves to ride their bike, but fails to turn up to the swimming pool or lace their running shoes up quite so often, or perhaps it's on one of the other two instead. Now, I know I don't need to explain this to you, but that is not very conducive to a faster triathlon time. Sure, you might post the fastest bike split of the day, but are you a cyclist or are you a triathlete? I do get it, obviously, if you do enjoy that, discipline more and you find it easier, then naturally you're going to be lured towards that sport more when you do have time to train. But if you can focus a little bit more on your weaknesses, that is going to pay absolute dividends come race day. So as a real rough guide, I'd recommend splitting up your total training time per week to 20% on swimming, 50% on cycling and 30% on running. And with that in mind, the next big mistake that I see more often than any is athletes not progressing their training sensibly. And I have to put my hand up here because I've definitely done this in the past myself. Oh man, so hard today. Maybe trying to do a track session and a two hour run this week, having not run for six months. It was a bit of a stupid idea. Yep, as triathletes, we are naturally quite impatient beings. Progressing our training too quickly is just stupid. We all know that but so many of us still do it. Now, more often than not, this comes about because we're not following a structured training program. So no matter what your standard is, your level of fitness, I can't recommend enough trying to plan out your training so you can follow that over a set period of time, or better, get yourself a coach so they can plan that out more thoroughly for you. Now, in this instance, I'd also recommend the use of an online training platform like Training Peak, so you can monitor all of that information within there. And then if you're using something like a sports watch or a bike computer, you can upload all of that information and data to that platform and you can start to rip that apart. You can start to see how much of each discipline you're doing, for instance, which could be very handy for those athletes we just discussed that like to favour one discipline over the other. Now, this is also really useful for those athletes that think they're invincible. They never need to recover. Oh, hello, mate. How you doing? Sorry, hang on one sec. I can't quite hear you. Let me just get somewhere quiet. Whoa, 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 whoa. Sorry, wait. Did I just hear you correctly? Did you just say a rest day? Let me clarify, a rest day. What on earth are you taking a rest day for? Now I'm afraid that is just complete rubbish. We all need to recover. Even the best athletes in the world will take recovery weeks or even complete days off. After all, we all want to progress. And to do that, we need to allow our bodies time to adapt and absorb all that hard training that we've been putting them through. Otherwise, without that, we can end up overtraining, we can end up injured, we can even end up ill. Now I do appreciate not all of us are in the mindset of actually skipping these recovery days. More often than not, it's actually just a mistake. We don't realize how long it's been since our last recovery day within our training, which shows just how important these online training platforms can be because with those, you can just quickly scroll back through, see when that last recovery day is. You can even see things like your training load, your stress score, and in some cases, your predicted form, and then adapt your training accordingly. Now, I always suggest trying to plan your training in blocks of three or four weeks where you'll progress your training, your build, the intensity and or the volume throughout those three or four weeks. And then you follow that with a complete day off and then a recovery week for the rest of that week. And then after that, we'll then start another progressive block of three or four weeks.
Now, I've all heard the phrase, all the gear, no idea. And I actually haven't got a problem with these people. If they want to splash their cash on a sport that they enjoy and things that they like, then good for them. There are certainly worse things that they can spend their money on. However, if you're spending your money on these fancy new products in the hope that it's gonna make you faster without actually doing any training or very little training, then you've got it all wrong. We all know that aero helmets and TT bikes are going to give us an advantage, but far too many athletes are focusing on things like aerodynamics before actually focusing on the basics. So before you go burning through your cash in the hope that it's going to improve your race time, try putting in some hard training first so that you'll feel a little bit more satisfied with those purchases. And I know I'm not going to convert all of you out there because that need for a nice new shiny bike or some race wheels is just that little bit too strong. Okay, I can hardly talk on this one. Okay, next up the road shoes. Ready, let's go. <laughs> yep, and not practicing your transitions. In this instance, I thought it'd be a great idea to have myself filmed doing my first transition onto a brand new bike. The saddle height was a bit higher than usual, and yet, I made a right shambles of it. And believe it or not, people also turn up to races without practicing their transitions too. So whether it is a fly mount or you're doing a simple stop and go transition, it's really important you practice before race day. And that includes having all your kit laid out as you normally would. So you can practice things like putting your helmet on, clipping it up, and even unclipping it and putting it back as if you were doing a T2, running with your bike, and even mounting and dismounting your bike. Now you can do that obviously within something like a brick set session or something I used to like doing was a standalone transition practice session. And I would do that actually at the beginning of my race season, given that it probably been quite a few months since my last race at the end of last season. Yeah, so I was going to start with the Norseman and then just two weeks later I was going to do a 5k, try and run a PB there. And then a week or so after that I've got the Ironman 70.3 World Champs and yeah, be cool if I win my age group there, that'd be really good. And then, um, and then I was going to squeeze in another little 70.3 just a week or two after that, maybe just a local one. And then a couple of weeks after that I've got the Ironman World Champs, so uh, yeah, quite a lot isn't it? Now, obviously I am joking, but it is amazing how often you hear this kind of stuff. Now, I would never want to rain on anyone's parade, but some people's plans are just a little bit over ambitious and that can be their schedule for the year or what they think they can achieve. Now, there's no harm in obviously aiming high, I always do, but be realistic at the same time because otherwise you're just setting yourself up to be disappointed and ultimately maybe falling out of love with what you're doing. And on the other hand, when you're planning your season, try to plan it wisely because if say you're planning on racing Olympic distance events for part of the season, then switching to Ironman events, you need to allow adequate time between that change for that change in training so that you can prepare fully. And then obviously think about that recovery time between each event. And then also it's worth noting that you can't peak for the whole season. You can only peak two or three times within the whole season. So again, you need to allow adequate time between each of those so that you can recover and then prepare fully. Okay, Mark, one more take. Okay, mate. Yeah, I bet you've all been there. Your training is going so well, you can't possibly miss a session. A cold, a niggle, an injury can't get in the way now. And I have definitely fallen foul to this. It's almost like we're in denial that it's really happening. But the problem is, if we ignore it, we can often make it far, far worse than it needed to be. So whether it is an injury or an illness, it's far better if we nip it in the bud sooner rather than later. And more often than not, you can be back training fully within a couple of days. However, by training through it, well, you're risking literally limping along, not being able to train to your full, and also prolonging it. Recognize any of those? Well, if you do, please get involved in the comments section below and maybe even shame one of your mates that perhaps needs to watch this video and get a little bit of advice. Now, if you like this video today, please hit that thumbs up button. And if you'd like to see more videos from GTN, you can click on the globe and subscribe. And you can head on over to our shop because we have these brand new hoodies that I'm donning today. Um, now, if you'd like to see some more videos from us, we have our unwritten rules video that you can see just here. And if you'd like to see our triathlon race mistakes, video then just click down here.